carb loading and carb cycling is also very helpful. I don't know any, oh, actually this was Arthur's best friend. <laughs> like we just, cause he's been dieting for quite some time. We lost a total of 21 kilos since the last bowl. Um, and obviously it got difficult. So to manage his energy, we just really focused on carb loading, carb cycling. So what we did was on days where he felt really low and you know, this is typically done through weekly submissions, weekly check-in analysis. Through that feedback, I'm able to assess, okay, what we've noticed were Arthur was usually three days and then he feels like shit, <laughs> right, Arthur? You know, before, yeah. before earlier on, he would do, he could do five days and have one refeed day or one high carb day and we're sweet. As we get deeper and deeper, body fat continue to drop. He's like, nope, every three days, I feel like shit. <laughs> so we're gonna add one more here. So we'll have a refeed to go back up. And then as he spikes back down, it's time for a refeed again. Because of that, we were able to go down lower and he was able to see some really, really cool results. And I'm, you know, I've been blasting him all over my Instagram because very proud, you know, especially with other commitments in life, like crazy. So there's, there's Arthur, absolutely very, very lean. Really the magic was just being able to stay in a deficit for a long time. I know there's people out there that say, oh, you don't have to, but no, that's really the only way if you want to get into that 10%. For Arthur, his best friend was a Stairmaster because he didn't have much time to, you know, commit to cardio. And I'm like, hey, okay, that's no problem. Let's do this or let's do something else. For Slava, he didn't like Stairmaster or, or walking. So what he did was they gave him a, he just rode his bicycle around like a couple times a week. And again, same thing with him, like high days, low days, just really assist with carb load, uh, energy management. Now, when, when it came down to like carb loading, carb cycling, carb timing throughout your day, we typically allocate simple carbohydrates for pre-workout. Simple carbohydrates are pretty much like, there's two types, right? There's complex and simple. I don't know if I have a picture here. To keep it very simple and surface level, this helps you with pumps, right? It gets, gets better blood flows, better performance, sugar, energy, 30, 40 minutes before a session, maybe an hour, depending on what you eat. And you should be feeling pretty good. That will help with just overall performance, energy, and pumps as well. Now, intracarbs, we, I don't really do this because then you're eating calories mid-session. And if our session is only 45 minutes to maybe maximum 60, which is all we really need for actual training, I don't think you, you don't really need intracarbohydrates, right? I don't like getting out of my desk when I'm working, when I'm in very deep work. I don't like to be disrupted. So from 5.30 in the morning all the way up to 10.30, I won't eat. Uh, my first meal will be around 10.30. It'll usually be eggs. But it just works for our lifestyle. I think, um, but because Arthur, um, he trained early in the morning. Was it 5.30? Yeah. Yeah, 5.30. It's important that he would eat something before. So we would have wheat bix Jared, are you on wheat bix as well right now? No, nah, I'm on... Cream or rice? The rice cream, yeah. Yeah, that's it. I, I train at about 4. Yeah. 3.30, 4. Yeah. In the morning, right? In the morning. So I'll get up, I'll eat that, and then get ready, drive to the gym, and start training. Did you, and remind me, before us, were you eating before training, or were you training fasted? Um, I was just training whenever really, okay. like in the Arvo and mm. or whenever, but now just because Maddie trains when I go home from work, so that's why I train in the morning. That's fair. Arthur, were you training yeah. fasted before us? I don't remember. Yes, yeah. I was. What's the difference in terms of performance with fasted and non-fasted? It's a big difference. Like you can actually do stuff. <laughs> in the gym. Yeah. Yeah, I was doing IF before I came to you as well. And my first, like I train in the morning, but my first meal won't be till like two o'clock or something like oh, that. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I remember you telling me that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta eat more food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll just say how it is. <laughs> um, I, I think it's so it's so dumb. Like, why would you, right? Like it's, it's available, mm. so you may as well optimize it. Especially if you're, um, depleted for such a long time like that meal is your best friend right and i think arthur was saying he'd go to sleep he'd wake up because he's so he's looking forward to the first meal <laughs> when we got deeper and deeper that's pretty much to summarize the whole process does any do anybody want to add you know do you guys want to add anything ask questions please jump in it could be about this it could be about anything at this point anything that i can do to help i just want to ask yes look Cheat, about cheat meals, right? I know you're not meant to have them, but it, like, is it a myth? Can you have one cheat meal a week? Okay. Or? First, let's, let's actually understand what a cheat meal is, right? I guess you can say in pop culture, cheat meal is just 
when you're off your meal plan, right? Not that we encourage you not to follow the meal plan. We encourage you to eat whatever you want as long as it fits your calories and macros, except pre and post workout. Like that's a staple. Make sure you eat those. Yesterday I, I had nachos, right? It was like 900 calories and I'm dieting, but I made it fit, right? I was a little yeah. bit over my fat intake by 10 grams, which is not what I, not ideal. 10 to 15 is it's okay, but I would prefer it to be one or five. But at the end of the day, I was still in a deficit, right? Yeah, so it must fit in your calories. It can't go above your calories. I'm going to add to that, right? This week, I also had like a large pizza and fucking garlic bread, right? Yes. <laughs> so it, nah. it really depends on what you're trying to do. Like, I'm a big believer yeah. of, if, like, for example, Jared, if you're going to go out with, your, uh, with, with Maddie, right? You guys want to grab dinner. You can't track it if it's once in a week. It's yeah, not I'm not saying once a week, but like, Look, I don't like to have cheat meals, mm. but like sometimes she's on my back. She's like, let's go out or yeah. something, you know? Yeah. Let's get take family out. But like, even if it's like once every fortnight or once a month, but like, is it better for me to like not eat all my meals and have my, have a cheat meal? Like say pull a couple of meals out so I'm mm. in the calories or should I eat all my food plus a massive so, cheat meal? To answer your question, Jared, what I typically get everybody to do is calorie bank, right? So I would fast that day, delay my first meal, and then eat a lot of protein throughout the day. I would just, you know, distribute my protein intake throughout the day, maybe 30, 30, anywhere between 20 to 45 grams of protein every three or so hours. Yeah. Sometimes what I would even do is eat and drink a lot of water, like um, low calorie stuff. So egg whites, vegetables, mushrooms, capsicum. So, yeah. when, I, so when I do go out and eat, I'm not starving because what happens is if you leave the house and you're starving, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're going to eat everything. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I'm talking from experience. <laughs> no, I've, cause I've just heard from other people like that guy from, you know, Jimmy from Riley's. Yes. I was close mates with him. He's like, oh, you can eat one bad meal a week and you can eat as much as you want. So he said, make it as big as you want because no. he eats like bloody 10 burgers, 16 ice no. creams. So he actually told me once. You no, know? do not so do that. That's what I mean. That's not a lifestyle, you know, like you yeah. got to understand one that's unhealthy to will cause yeah. like bad relationships with food because yeah. what, what I used to do, right? I'm like, I only have this one meal. So I have, it's going to run away from me. So now is the only time I can eat, dude, I would have like a box of cookies and they're like 800 mm. to a thousand calories each. And I would have six yeah. <laughs> on top of a meal, right? It was, yeah. it was it's not good. Um, yeah. I feel sick anyway after, like now that I'm on a clean diet, once I have, if I have a cheat meal, like I had one last night and I feel like shit. <laughs> yeah, that's what Arthur was saying. It's like, oh, I hate it. You crave. So I'm like, oh, why do we, why do I even do that? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, painful, man. And then you just punish yourself for the next three days crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just not worth it sometimes. That's no. That's what Arthur was saying. He's like, man, I'm craving for fried chicken. He had fried chicken. He's like, oh, wasn't that as good as I remember? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, <laughs> usually what happens. Um, you, you, you always you feel like every day every week and as soon as you have that meal you just have a, you, you feel, feel bloated. bloated i woke yeah. up with a i woke up with a, a baby belly <laughs> <laughs> it's disgraceful so don't don't feel bad about it like it's yeah. okay you, you know it's it's your choice ultimately obviously if you don't do it you'll be more on track it's more calculated not even yeah. necessarily more track just more calculated so it's okay like it's actually something i would encourage my, my coach he calls it free days right it's like a free, yeah. a free meal or a free day. It's not like a cheat day because you're not cheating per se, or you're just not mm. eating. I, I don't know. It really depends on how you approach it. Like if you're still within your calories and macro suite, because you become so um, visual with tracking your calories as you do it more and more, you can kind yeah. of guesstimate how much you've eaten throughout the day or how much something might be. And at the end of the day, you could be like, I think I, I think I ate a little bit underneath. That's the only time I would encourage intuitive eating. Otherwise, yeah. I think for people that's like, oh, I feel full, but I can't gain weight. Well, yeah, no shit, because you're probably not eating more than what you need to. <laughs> like, you know, or I'm hungry, but I'm not losing weight. Well, I'm like, yeah, well, you, all you had is like, you had three hamburgers from McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, obviously, you're not going to be full. So I would only encourage intuitive eating when, you're, when you've been doing, tracking calories, weighing for a long time, and have a really good library of data in your own head to make these decisions. Anybody else, like people that's outside the program, I would love to hear from you. Any questions, please. Is your coaching training only men or do you help women too? We do women as well. Um, Slav is here. If he was here, uh, I actually coach his partner. I've had a few female clients in the past. I know that the marketing is very masculine. Don't let that push you away. <laughs> but we, we definitely do 
help women as well. Anybody else have a question? Actually, I'd love to add to that. Um, a very common thing I get a lot from my female clients, and I don't know if this is too much information, but everybody here will, you know, might have a partner at some point or deal with this with your sisters or whatever, your cravings when it's um, that, you know, that time of the month. What I like to do is actually create a emergency meal plan. So uh, Jacinta, Slava's partner, she said she had a lot of cravings for chocolate and stuff. So I created like a tab and I also did the same with another client. I would have like ice cream and it still fit their calories and macros. I'm like, in the case that you ever get cravings, follow this meal plan. It has chocolates, it has ice creams and you will still lose weight. And if you guys are, have partners, you can do the same for them, you know, to help them stay on track. Just um, manipulate your calories, macros and food selection. Yeah, cool. And also for women, it's very common for them to spike up in weight. Yes. Um, yeah, I have a question. It's Please. sort of the same subject, I guess. Going to the gym three times a week enough for muscle growth, for muscle growth, or Look, does that have to be like five? So again, I want us to really go back to the concepts of progressive overload is the main factor to, to growth, right? As long as we're increasing every week, you are going to build tissue. Now, if we're looking at how to build tissue faster, obviously there's a bunch of different variables and things that you need to take into account. For some, sometimes more work is better. Other times it becomes redundant, okay? So three times a week, three times 45 minute sessions, it's great, you know, that, that's, that's a good place. It's not too little, it's not too much. Obviously you'd see more results if you do five times 45, right? At least, right? When you start to do five times three hours, like it's just redundant, right? Six, I think six times, Seven times, it's unnecessary. I usually like five sessions a week, 60 minutes. But three, this is what we have a few people on as well. Another thing, right, I want to add. People worry about five times a week versus three times, right? But can you even train five times a week? If you can't consistently, keyword consistently, then do something that you can't say consistently. Because sometimes this is what a lot of people do. They'll do one week, let's say week one. They'll train four times. Week two, they'll train three times week three yeah. they'll train six times so what happens is here maybe you did push pull legs upper and here you did push pull legs and then here you did push pull legs push pull legs you can but it's not controlled right your proportions won't be that great unless you dive into the you know unless you really oh okay i did this many sets for this muscle group now i have to compensate for this it's just over complicates the process to keep it very simple if you can only do three don't fight it, work with it, okay? And then let's see, okay, how can I maximize those three sessions? How do I delegate my volume? What movements do I select, right? And then if you have 45 minutes, how many sets can I do? What's my rest period? How does my structure look like? Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Yeah, that makes, that actually, yeah. Cool. Thanks, man. No problem, man. Always happy to. Guys, I'm sure everybody has a bunch of questions. You know, I'm sure that's the reason you guys joined in today. Even if it's specifically about you, you know, some problems that you've encountered, issues, and it could be outside training, you know, consistency, even even outside fitness. I'm a personal trainer myself. I have clients as well, so I'm always very busy. Yes. So I'm helping my clients, training as well. But I feel one thing I'm lacking right now is my sleep schedule. Sleep. Okay. Sleep is the trickiest thing for everyone, right? What I like to do, and I'll actually make a video on this is, do you use Google Calendar at all, Q? No, I'm not. Okay, that's a big one, right? So what I like to do, I'll make a video. You go in Google Calendar, and I want you to create a reoccurring event of like, when do you wake up usually? When do you go to sleep? When And when are your training sessions throughout the day? But let's just say, for example, every day you wake up at 5.30 in the morning, and then from X to X, you have training sessions, and then you get home at around X amount of time, and then you need to be asleep. Let's just say 10. And on average, you know, it takes you about one hour to go to sleep, right? Or you need to be in bed, let's say 30 minutes before you pass out. Take that into account. So let's say you fall, you want to sleep at 10.30, right? You want to, and 10.30, add 30 minutes, be in bed, so you can be sure that you're asleep here. Really comes down to just managing your day and being productive and not taking on more than you can handle, right? It's important to work hard, but you got to understand that if you're constantly working, working, you're not as sharp when it comes to decisions, your delivery is not as good. So it's actually more advantageous to let's say, say no to one client so you can get one or two hours of extra sleep 
So the next day, your delivery is better. To, I guess to answer your question, let's go one, Google Calendar. Two, mark your regular routine, i.e. wake up 6 a.m. Um, what I would even do is reverse it, right? So if you have, let's say, look at your work schedule first and then taking into account, okay, I need this amount of time to travel, this amount of time to get ready, then this is when I wake up. So always look at what is non-negotiable, what can't be changed, and then work around that, right? And then from there, maybe reduce your workload if you can. If you can't, just, you know, maybe reduce your training time. Just be be more efficient. And I'll, and I'll create another, maybe that's something we can discuss later on, um, but it's definitely a video I want to make. So that way we don't rush that response. But that's just to kind of give you a bit of an idea. Q, does that answer your question? Does that help? Yeah, 100%. Thank you very much. Yeah. I would, like I said, because the biggest thing about me is that I just love to work. And yeah. I know what rest is very important. But at 10 p.m. when I know I should be in bed, my mind's still awake. So I just end up working and end up mm. doing that, I find it very important to actually not work. When, when you can't go to sleep, you get up and do more work. It just stimulates your mind a little bit more. So it makes it more difficult to go to sleep. So try not to do anything very um, demanding. Like I like to watch movies, you know, or you can read a book or just, you know, have a hot shower. Do something to really relax you. Because if you stimulate your mind and you do a bit more thinking, you're going to have a harder time to go to sleep. Um, also, for people that are dieting, eat carbohydrates. Move more carbs there. You ever like implement caffeine or like coffee into the uh, cutting cycle to help? Yes. You know, all that. You can definitely do that. What I highly recommend though is because when you're in a deficit, depending on your caloric range, um, your sleep quality is already going to go down. Right now, for most of you, you guys are not enhanced, but for some people that are enhanced, um, your sleep quality is also depending on the compounds you're taking is absolutely trash. Right. So when you're you when your intake is low, it's re- your sleep quality is already poor. When you're enhanced, it's even worse. When you're stressed, it's really really bad. So I try to avoid caffeine, but instead I use pump formulas. Right, um, because it's non caffeinated, but still provides stimulus and focus and energy as well. Um, so it doesn't affect my sleep quality, right? Um, and I try not to take any more than 300, 400 megs of caffeine. I used to overdo it. Like when I was younger, I would have 1.2, like a thousand, like three, three, I don't know what it was, like three servings of 400 megs of caffeine. It was, it was just a stim junkie. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, this will give me a good session. No, it was terrible. Don't do that. Um, and I also with a lot of people that I work with, you know, people in the office and stuff. I actually advise to stay away, not stay away, but limit coffee intake because then you also become subconsciously reliant on it too. You know, you're like, oh, I, need, I wake up, I need to have my morning coffee to have energy. Like, no, you don't. Stop being a fucking bitch. Like, I wake up, I'm on five hours of sleep, I get up, I do my treadmill, and I'm on my computer, and I'm sweet, right? I only take, the only time I'll take some stimulus is maybe um, a little bit before the gym, right? If I need it, if I need it, right? Um, I try not to be relying on it because I think, you know, it's, it's obviously just a better approach. Um, also because it does affect my sleep and sleep is probably the most important thing. Everybody following along? Yeah. Cool. So diet breaks is another really good method, right? So let's say you've been dieting for about, let's say 20 weeks, right? Now you're, you kind of plateau here. You're going to need to want to either go back, shoot back up to maintenance and kind of hold that up for about six or eight weeks. And then from there, Go back that transition back. And if Lance was here, that's kind of what we're doing for him. How did everybody find, I'd love to hear just some feedback from today. How did everybody find today? Yeah, good. Yeah. Especially about the chain meal. Yeah, sweet. Do you like the, did you like the visuals, like the little drawings and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. That was good. Is it more engaging than usual? Yeah, it was was perfect, I think. Yeah. Oli, um, Oli signed as well, so... Um, keen to yeah, awesome. Calls. Yeah, thanks for yeah, your I've referral. Got a, that's all good. I've got a few other people I'm trying to work in. <laughs> yeah, they just they, they just they have a heart attack. So I'm, I tell them. Yeah, I'm yeah. Luck with the cost thing and that, you know. But yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I try and yeah. I try and tell them like it's, it's good, like you spend money on shit, you know. Yeah. Like yeah. like I you know other stuff like what's 
What's yeah. the point? Well, you might as well spend money on something that's going to benefit you. Yeah, exactly. And I think and you, get... you get a lot more than just coaching. Like, we don't just give you a meal plan program and catch a later, right? Like, I really yeah. want the whole point of this is so that you can, you guys can learn um, and take this away from, you know, work and apply into other areas or even just teach other people how to do it. That's why I like to host these little lectures now because, like, yeah. you know, you can actually learn a lot, understand the process a bit more while keeping it very simple to understand. Like, I don't go into complexities. I don't think you need to personally because I've delved into it. I've read so many different articles in the past and literally one thing will say one thing and then another article will say the opposite. So it's like, yeah, thank you guys for hopping on. Thank you guys for watching the content. Um, if you got mates that need help, send them through the page. Send them, you know, invite them to these calls. They just want to really grow, grow the community so we can do cool, cool stuff. See you guys. Thank you for hopping today. Hey guys. Bye.